Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you have had a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into this. And the first thing we have to talk about today is Charlottesville. And this whole situation is and isn't about the removal of a statue. In Charlottesville, they have a huge statue of Robert E. Lee. So you have this Robert E. Lee statue in a park that used to be called the Robert E. Lee Park. It is now called Emancipation Park. The Charlottesville City Council also voted to remove the statue. As of right now, it has not been removed because there is a court injunction. And there have been protests by people in the past not happy about the statue removal, but nothing thing was as big as what was planned for Saturday. But even before Saturday on Friday night, there was a torch lit demonstration. They marched up to the statue. Also at one point, a violent fight broke out. It kind of at the end looked like just mobbing. And I'll be honest with you, the whole thing disgusted me. I woke up Saturday morning and I, I, the first images I saw were people throwing out the Nazi salute. A bunch of angry white guys in the middle of the night with tiki torches surrounding a statue screaming white lives matter, throwing out Sieg Heils. Once again, I say this as someone that is very for freedom of speech. I have had to defend the Westboro Baptist Church and their disgusting views in the past. Once it gets violent, that's obviously a different story, but then to use my own freedom of speech, I wanna say, fuck Nazis. It's not a hard thing to do. Fuck white supremacists, not a hard thing to do. Plainly put, a lot of what we saw here was hate and bigotry hidden under the veil of patriotism. And to the people that were a part of this protest saying, I don't know why I'm being called a Nazi or a white supremacist, I was just there for insert blank free speech thing. How can you be shocked? There was a right activist by the name of Baked Alaska that went to this event. Now after Saturday, he ended up in the hospital. There's potential eye damage there. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But in the past day, I've seen him tweet things like, I'm not a neo-Nazi. In current year, if you're white and don't bathe in the tears of white guilt, you're a white supremacist, neo-Nazi, domestic terrorist. He's taken offense to being called a white supremacist, a Nazi in the past, but I have to say, I'm not saying you are, but you can't be surprised when you live stream and you put out videos of, like, like this one from Friday night. <laughs> So you say, hail victory. For those that do not realize, Sieg Hail means hail victory. They're saying Sieg Hail, but in English. And then in the same minute, this happened. Lives matter. White 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 lives matter. So you and a bunch of the people around you who are definitely not white supremacists or neo-Nazis are shouting white lives matter, and you, you yourself focus on the people throwing out the Nazi salute, who are also chanting the same thing as you. And you're not like, well, that's wrong. Also, it doesn't help your argument when you tweet out videos called The 14 Words, a song version of a quote from David Lane, a noted white supremacist. And those 14 words reading, we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. Once again, I'm not saying Baked Alaska is a neo-Nazi or a white supremacist, but I don't understand how he can be confused as to why he's being bunched in. But. Let's move on. So all of that happened, and then we have Saturday morning. Saturday morning, before the protest was actually supposed to take place, what was scheduled? Protesters and counter-protesters met at Emancipation Park, and it got ugly fast. At first, it started with disrespectful chants. <laughs> And very quickly, to the shock of very few, we saw fights breaking out. People were throwing rocks, bottles with concrete in them, glass bottles. You had people there with helmets, homemade shields, batons. After protesters were being pushed out of the park by police, we saw other fights breaking out in the streets. At one point, we saw this horrifying mobbing. A state of emergency was declared, and soon after, something horrible happened. Someone drove their car through protesters and then crashed into another car. And a big point I want to hit here is technically there was a car crash. One car hit another. But from all the angles where video is being recorded, this 100% looks like an attack. Just a warning before I start showing this video, this is graphic. From the first angle, we just see that there are three cars involved in a crash. After that video blew up, there were a lot of claims saying that people had surrounded that car and they just tried to take off and that's why the crash happened. But from a second video, we see that Dodge Challenger uncontested speeding into that alley. Accelerating, it's gaining speed as it heads towards the crowd. The Challenger then sped away from the scene of the crime, but luckily the police were able to find them. The driver was arrested and has since been identified as 20 year old James Fields. He's from Ohio and was found in pictures to be a part of Vanguard America. Vanguard America is a white nationalist organization that believes in the motto of blood and soil. And that's a motto derived from the Nazi slogan, which is all about racial purity in a national territory. Part of their manifesto reads, a multicultural nation is no nation at all. Our America is to be a nation exclusively for the white American peoples. And I explain their points there so you understand what James was a part of. James Fields, a man who drove his car accelerated into a group of counter protesters he did not agree with, injuring 19 of them, five of them critically, and killing one. That being 32-year-old Heather Heyer. And as of right now, Fields is facing charges for second-degree murder, malicious wounding, and failure to stop in an accident that resulted in death. Also adding to the death count in Charlottesville, there was the death of two state police officers, Lieutenant H.J. Cullen and Trooper Pilot Burke Bates. Reportedly, these two died as they were trying to help with public safety when their helicopter crashed into a wooded area. But following this horrible car attack and all of the violence, there were many responses. Attorney General Jeff Sessions 
Russians said this is unequivocally an unacceptable evil attack. Adding that this attack, quote, does meet the definition of domestic terrorism. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan saying, the views fueling the spectacle in Charlottesville are repugnant. Let it only serve to unite Americans against this kind of vile bigotry. Our hearts are with today's victims. White supremacy is a scourge. This hate and its terrorism must be confronted and defeated. Ted Cruz writing, the Nazis, the KKK, and white supremacists are repulsive and evil. And all of us have a moral obligation to speak out against the lies, bigotry, anti-Semitism, and the hatred that they propagate. I urge the Department of Justice to immediately investigate and prosecute this grotesque act of domestic terrorism. Barack Obama tweeted out a quote from Nelson Mandela writing, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. The FBI is saying they're opening a civil rights investigation into this crash. And then we had Donald Trump who said this. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides on many sides. And while some saw this as good that the president was also speaking out, there were others saying, what does the president mean on many sides? Why is President Trump not specifically calling out the KKK, white supremacists, neo-Nazis? Many adding on, it's not just that he said this, but at that same press conference, when given the chance two times to specifically condemn the KKK, he just didn't respond. And while the president did not immediately clarify or respond to this outrage, a White House spokesperson did. And they said, the president said very strongly in his statement yesterday that he condemns all forms of violence, bigotry, and hatred. Of course, that includes white supremacists, KKK, neo-Nazi, and all extremist groups. He also had a Republican Senator Cory Gardner calling on the president to call out evil by its name, saying, Mr. President, we must call evil by its name. These were white supremacists and this was domestic terrorism. But then today, the president in front of cameras got a little more specific and said this. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK. <laughs> neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. And so Trump's statements here, his phrasing, it's been a big part of a specific debate. And that debate is around how at fault Donald Trump is for events like this. You have people like the former Imperial Wizard of the KKK, David Duke, at this protest saying, This represents a turning point for the people of this country. We are determined to take our country back. We're gonna fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. That's what we believed in. That's why we voted for Donald Trump. Trump because he said he's going to take our country back and that's what we got to do. But also in Donald Trump's defense, he and David Duke are not one and the same. When Donald Trump tweeted, we all must be united and condemn all that hate stands for. There is no place for this kind of violence in America. Let's come together as one. David Duke quoted that tweet and responded by saying, so after decades of white Americans being targeted for discriminated and anti-white hatred, we come together as a people and you attack us? I would recommend you take a good look in the mirror and remember it was white Americans who put you in the presidency, not radical leftists. But also you had neo-Nazi sites like the Daily Stormer saying Donald Trump loves us, posting an article after Donald Trump's many side speech where they wrote, he didn't attack us. He just said the nation should come together. Nothing specific against us, no condemnation at all. When asked to condemn, he just walked out of the room. Really, really good, God bless him. It's not the best thing to hear from a site that literally has a section called Jewish Problem, a site known for its white nationalism, its anti-Semitism, its neo-Nazism. Also a website that disgustingly attacked the victim of that car attack, saying that Hire died in a road rage incident, adding she was a drain to society, most people are glad she is dead, and then disparaging her appearance. A post so disgusting that their web host, GoDaddy, tweeted, We informed the Daily Stormer that they have 24 hours to move the domain to another provider as they have violated our terms of service. And a GoDaddy spokesperson specifically pointed to the article about hire as the reason, saying, Given the Daily Stormer's latest article comes on the immediate heels of a violent act, we believe this type of article could incite additional violence which violates our terms of service. There were also reports that the Daily Stormer was attacked by Anonymous, although that has not been confirmed at this point. It's also hard to tell with a site like Daily Stormer, who in the past have glorified people they actually hate. There's always the potential that they're just trolling or maybe someone else is trolling here. But ultimately to the question, is Donald Trump to blame for Charlottesville? I don't believe so. Now did Donald Trump win the election in part due to people like this? Yes. And did his winning make those people feel like maybe this is our time? Yes, we even see that from the words of David Duke. But as far as Donald Trump being responsible, no. He's as responsible as Bernie Sanders is for that Bernie supporter shooting up that congressional softball game. And by that I mean neither of them are responsible. 
possible. And so where does that leave us today? I, I don't know. I, I'm sad about the state of my country. Yesterday I saw the hashtag trending, this is not us, but it is. We need to acknowledge the pimples on our country's face. I will denounce violence regardless of the perpetrator. I'm talking about Nazis and white supremacists today. And in the past I've denounced the violence from Antifa, anarchists, BLM. But when we're talking about the violence of one group, it shouldn't be mandatory to also say, but oh, the other side is also violent. If we're forced to constantly do that, we lose how important the thing we're talking about now is. Today we are talking about a white nationalist alt-right protest that resulted in someone that was there for the protest running over, maiming people, and killing one person. When it comes to people like Baked Alaska, who I, I think their argument is flawed, they, they put out at times disgusting things. I would also never support violence against him. There are differing reports around him as of recording this video. Some say he got sprayed with bear mace. There's also belief that it was another chemical mixture. He's been tweeting out that he might have permanent eye damage. And to the people cheering on violence against him, I just, I can't agree with that. I greatly disagree with him on many things. I've been disgusted by some of the stuff he has done. He really is confused as to why people are rolling him and others into white supremacist groups. I think he needs to take a better look at his actions. When, when you lie with dogs, you get fleas. And I also want to throw it out there that I think things are going to get worse. There's a give and take in this country. Uh, you would not have gotten Barack Obama if you didn't have Bush. We would never have gotten a Trump without an Obama and then a Hillary Clinton. And when I look Saturday and I voiced my opinion against Nazis, other people were voicing their opinion against white supremacists, there were also people just blaming white people. Blaming them. We also saw white guilt on display thanks to people like Lord. Lord tweeting, I just want to say I'm so, so sorry. All white people are responsible for this system's thrive and fall. We have to do better. I'm sorry. I mean, that tweet's going to play fantastically in the echo chamber of look how woke I am. But all that does is blame and alienate potential allies. So Lord, I 100% agree with you on the we have to do better part. But the path to fighting oppression and inequality is not paved by making a blanket statement about white people. By the placement of blame and guilt on a single color of people. But that's where I'm gonna end today's show. I feel like I still I still have a lot to digest. I, I'm just generally sad that my country's at this point. It feels like more and more the extremists guide the conversation. They control our viewpoint of what the other is. Although I think a big chunk of people realize that there is, there is a very large group in the middle that is very rational. More and more every day we have the extremists Pac-Manning their way to the middle very slowly but but surely. And yeah, like I said, I'd love to know your thoughts here in those comments down below. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you missed and want to catch up on the previous Philip DeFranco show, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll I'll see you tomorrow.